Hi everyone, it's Lauren. I hope you're all doing really well. Today, as you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about my labour and delivery story. So I had a baby girl back in April, <laughs> so she's about seven, seven, eight months now. And when I came back to YouTube, there were quite a lot of questions asking me how the birth was, and I've got no problem going into details about my birth at all. I just thought it would be better in a separate video, um, just to allow those who want to avoid it, to avoid it, and to really be able to go into details and talk about it properly for those people that are interested, because I'm sure there are some of you that are going, going to be mums or going to be parents in the future, some people who are pregnant, some people who are just nosy. So I thought I'd give a full overview of what happened and what it was like for me, um, if you are interested. I will say from the outset, I know the title looks a little bit scary, um, there is no bad thing that happens um, in this story. Um, the birth was not particularly traumatic. Everyone was all right at the end of it, um, if you are concerned, but I will be, you know, giving details. And obviously labor is quite difficult. I don't know if you've heard that. So just as a, as a warning, in case you are, you know, about to go through it yourself and don't want to hear any bad news or don't want to hear anything that's going to scare you. You know, it's very difficult, this sort of thing. Um, I don't think I really, watched lots of birth stories myself before I was going to have um, have Edith, so each to their own, um, but just to, just to forewarn you before we get into the nitty gritty. So as I said, this was back in April, so several months away now, and in some ways I think it's good that I have some, have some space from the labour to be able to talk about it properly, um, because I do have quite a few unresolved feelings surrounding it. I certainly did um, straight after the birth because it's a very, you know, it's traumatic in many ways physically, but also just emotionally, it, it's such a huge thing to go through. Um, but also I feel like maybe I've forgotten some details now or I've forgotten th that connection to it because it's it's been so much time, so we'll see how it goes. So while I was pregnant, I was planning and hoping to do um, hypnobirthing. I did want to try and give birth naturally, um, not everybody does, but that's what I wanted to tr wanted to, to have a go at. I was very pragmatic the whole way through because I'd never given birth before and I knew it was gonna be very painful and very difficult and also you can't control or predict your own body. But I kind of had the idealized birth I wanted. I wanted to try hypnobirthing. I did quite a lot of practice with the techniques and the breathing and visualizations beforehand while I was pregnant. And even though it didn't work out that way, I still feel like that was helpful. It did help me feel calm and it helped me feel like I was preparing in some way for the birth. But I always said that if I needed anything, if I needed pain relief, we would just do it. Um, you know, there was never a kind of, I'm gonna try and avoid having an epidural or avoid, you know, whatever it was. We always kind of said, well, what was best for me and the baby health-wise was the decision we were gonna make. And we didn't know how we were gonna feel once we were in labor, you know, like how we would feel about each each thing that was available to us. Um, for example, one of the things we, we wanted to try was water birthing, like we wanted to try the pool for pain relief, but neither of us really wanted to have a, a an actual birth in the pool um, but you know sometimes you change your mind when you're actually in these in these situations so we were very open to that and we also always said if we needed a cesarean and it ended up that way obviously we would say yes to that because that's what we needed to do um, you know safety and health was the priority so that's how we approached it going in one of the things I really didn't want to happen was to be induced because I knew that it was more painful if you're induced and I also knew anecdotally that it seemed to always end up in a C-section if you got induced because you weren't necessarily, your body wasn't necessarily ready to go naturally. So I did want to hold it off. Um, I think when I got to 40 weeks, I had a number of sweeps. And if you didn't know what a sweep is, you're going to find out now, lucky you. It's where the midwives kind of stick their fingers <laughs> up your vagina and try and, like, I think they're separating the sack from your cervix or something. They're doing something where they're trying to like, just push things along. I don't really know how it works, but somehow kind of giving some movement and separating things supposedly can get labor kick-started. Um, I had, I think maybe three of those and they weren't very painful for me, um, but the, I don't find smear tests painful. Like everybody's level of pain with their cervix is very different. But for me, in my experience, they were fine. Didn't work though, did they? <laughs> I think I had them like sort of every few days, like after 40 weeks, I had a few appointments with the midwives um, and 
every time they examined me, they were like, wow, you are ready to go. Like you are one centimeter dilated. And then it went up and I was like, oh yeah, you're already like two centimeters dilated. It will be tonight. We won't need to see you next week. I'll give you an appointment, but I won't see you next week. And then it never, and then it never happened. We did have a full slaver as well. I think, I can't remember when it was now. It might have been just after my due date, but I had pains in the middle of the night. And Will and I got up and we were like, oh, this is it, this is it, we're ready to go. And we got um, everything that we'd got sorted in our hospital bag downstairs, all the things I might need. I had a TENS machine, which is like something that gives you electric currents on your back, which is supposed to help with pain. And we got all set up um, and then we went back to sleep. And then that was it, it, it ended. <laughs> and um, yeah, I didn't go into labor. So my body was really primed and ready to go, which is what makes it even more frustrating that I didn't go into labor naturally. In the UK with the NHS, they don't like to let you go over 14 days, I believe, over your due date. It's a long while ago now, and I knew all these numbers off the top of my head before, but it's something like, um, you know, if your due date is 40 weeks, they they want you to have that baby by 14, like 40 plus 14 days. So therefore they induce you on something like day 12, um, or 13 so that the baby is born by 14, uh, 14 days overdue, if that makes sense. So I had like several appointments with midwives. I had several times them telling me, you, you're going to birth naturally, you're not gonna have to induce, but we did have an induction. Um, and Will and I had discussed it. You don't have to have an induction. Like you can always say no, um, it's your body. And I could have refused it, but in the end, um, we decided to go for the induction because we just we did just feel, feel like it was safer. Um, so I went in, I think it was something like 10 or 11 in the morning. They start by inserting a propess, which is something which I think sits in your cervix and it kind of releases um, a drug which induces labor. And I tell you what, my body was definitely ready to go. It was ridiculous. I inserted it and like immediately I started, ha I was in labor, I started having contractions. They were reasonably close together and quite strong. Uh, very soon. I don't know what it's like for other people who get induced, but it was it was like immediate. I didn't really have to wait. I remember them saying, oh, you might have to wait a couple of hours and we'll check whether you're going into labor. And it was like, yeah, I'm, de I'm in labor, definitely. Um, but they let us go home and literally it was so ridiculous. Like immediately I, I had an app which was timing my contractions and it tells you when you're supposed to go into hospital, which is normally when you have contractions, which just, I can't remember again, it's something like you have to have three contractions in 10 minutes or something, they have to be a certain length and a certain number of minutes apart before you're in what's considered active labor. And active labor normally means you're four centimeters dilated already. But I guess because it was an induction, I was like immediately there. Like we were only at home for about an hour, I think. And then on my app, it was saying like, call the hospital, like you need to go in. And then what happened to us was the propess actually came out, it, it fell out. So we called them and said, oh, like, what should we do? Should we come back in? And they're like, yeah, if it's, if it's come out, come back into us and we'll reinsert it or see if you need it reinserting. So we went, we went in, like the drive was ridiculous. Like every bump in the road, I was like, ah, ah. And we was like trying to get me there. And they examined me, were like, yes, you're definitely in labor. You do not need that propess anymore. Um, but in the examination, um, my water burst burst <laughs> sounds like it's a mains pipe my waters broke and once the waters um do break you've got really 24 hours before that baby needs to come out because of the risk of infection so because my waters broke they then admitted me by actually was still only two, just over two centimeters dilated because no time had passed since they'd induced me <laughs> um so they normally would admit you either if your waters break or you're four centimeters dilated. So I was in this kind of weird in-between time um, where they put me on the, on the labor ward, beautiful ward, it was so nice. All the, all the rooms were like, um, you had your own room and your own toilet, like it's just been redone. Um, so it was, it was lovely, the delivery suites were so lovely. Um, so we were in there and what I wanted to do was go, um, go in the pool to try for a water birth, but they don't let you do that until you're in active labor, which means four centimeters dilated. Um, and I guess that's because the water, I think they said something like, you can get too relaxed 
and then labor won't, won't happen. So they need to make sure you're really in labor before they put you in it. So I was just in this weird limbo. It was like a midwife run unit. So they have the labor ward, which is for more high risk births. And if you're low risk, which is what I was at the time, um, it, there's just midwives and no doctors and they don't really examine you that much and you can just walk around, you're not hooked up to anything. And um, there's gas and air obviously, um, but there's not really loads of, um, pain relief available but they have the baths and it's all like chilled so that's what we started with um, and it was really nice um, me and Will had I can't remember if we were doing this at this time but we had like peep show on just running on Will's laptop because it's something that we know really well and there's loads of seasons of it and it can just be on in the background it was kind of keeping us um, keeping us going I had made playlists of music which was like keeping us awake um, and yeah, oh, it's such a blur now to try and remember that period. I know we were in that room for a really long time and they only examine you every two hours. So I remember when they examined me and said, oh, you're still only three centimeters. We're like, we can't put you in the pool yet. And so I decided to have some pain relief, which they administer as an injection and it's, it's morphine basically. I can't remember what it's called. It's like pethadrine or peth or something. Um, and I, we, we weren't really gonna, have that that's not something we wanted to do because it does cross the, pl pl the placenta but i think there's a time and a place for every pain relief method depending on where you are in labor so because it was so early and we knew that we had so much longer to go um we had that and yeah it was it did help it did help i mean gas and air doesn't help really at all i think it just gives you something to do um, the breathing helps the hypnobirthing breathing it was hard to do when i was in pain <laughs> But it did genuinely help because it just relaxes your muscles and the gas and air kind of helps with that but almost counteracts it because with relaxed breathing you're supposed to be breathing out a lot and going through the contractions and obviously with gas and air you're trying to inhale it so it was tricky to get a technique where I could inhale some gas and air before the contraction really got bad and then breathe out through the contraction um, and it sort of helped but you know it was very very painful so the morphine injection did genuinely help like it really took the edge off but I was off my face like I was so confused I really didn't like it I was just felt so sleepy and tired but obviously I couldn't sleep because I was in labor and it made me sick they'd give me an antiemetic um like extra they give you some anyway but then I was sick so they had to give me some more um so yeah it, that wasn't great and that was like overnight I can't remember what time it was in the morning I want to say it was like maybe six seven o'clock in the morning uh, maybe it was six in the morning um, when I was allowed, I got to four centimetres and I was allowed to move to the room um, where the birthing pool was. And that was such a relief. It'd been such a long night and I'd been like half asleep. It was really weird. I was like having 30 second sleeps, like in between contractions. I was like sitting on a birthing ball with a big bean bag on the, on the bed. I was leaning on the bean bag, sitting on the ball and like with the, my gas and air in one hand, I was like falling asleep and then going like, just I don't know how I managed to get a bit of sleep I think I did um and then it felt like when we moved rooms a bit like a new lease of life like yeah okay we're getting in the pool now um and the pool was great like it did really help I felt really relaxed and then once I was in there I was like well I cannot leave this pool but then what came after we got in the pool was probably the worst the absolute worst bit the worst bit it was like the worst maybe two hours of my life um where it would the contractions were so frequent and so strong and I guess the morphine had worn, had worn off by that point because they don't want you to have morphine while you're in a bath obviously because um, you might like fall asleep in the water I guess um, and but basically what the problem was apart from the fact I was in labour was that I had kind of fluid retention um, and it was make, it was, had so much pressure um, down around my pelvic area and it really felt like I needed to push and I was like this is ridiculous like I, I was only four or five centimeters just now surely I can't be needing to push yet but it really felt like a shift in the pain um and I had to wait till I remember this I'm sure it was eight o'clock I had to wait till when that was the time when they would examine me again and I was just like oh my gosh and I couldn't wait for that moment we got out of the pool um before being examined I <laughs> Basically, all the fluid I've been retaining uh, came out, and it came out in several ways. The woman was like, why don't you go to the toilet? I didn't make it to the toilet. Um, I weed everywhere, <laughs> all over the floor. Um, they were trying to catch it in a little bucket, but, mate, it was not in the right place, and <laughs> it had happened by that point. Um, and 
I can't remember what the, the amounts were. I think it was at least a litre, if not like two that came out that way. And then I, um, as soon as the new doctor and new midwife and everybody, because they change shifts at eight, at eight o'clock, they all came in to meet me and I was like, hello, I've just weed all over the floor. Now let me proceed to vomit all over you. Um, and there was like a little chain happening. You know, like when people have buckets of water along a train to try to put a fire out, it had me throwing up in a bucket, Will giving it to like the nurse and then like another bucket coming for me and it was all like going along. <laughs> and I threw up a lot of water then as well. And <laughs> I remember just being like, this is great first impression. Hi, uh, new doctor, nice to meet you. But that did really help with the pain. And now that I've been through labor, I'm like, aha, it is important to go to the toilet. I remember that if I'm ever in labor again, um, because that did really help um, with the pain. It was still extremely painful, but I think all of that in my body was just making it even worse. Um, so I was like crying, going, <laughs> please gonna have an epidural, it's just so painful. And one of the uh, younger doctors sort of, was, she was so nice and she was like sort of, the hand on my shoulder and was like, you know what, why don't you just try the morphine again? Because she's like, I know you want to give birth up here and you don't want to go into the labour ward, which was equally nice, by the way, she's very much more medicalised and she's like, I know you would rather have the baby up here. So try the morphine and you can have an epidural like immediately, even if you want it like 20 minutes after, you can then have it. Like you're not delaying any anything and you're just trying another step. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's really good advice because I did want to be able to walk around. And this is the thing, like if you have an epidural, you're obviously like hooked up um, and you're in a bed. And I wanted to walk and be active because that supposedly helps you have an, a quicker labor. Um, so we did that, we did morphine again. And uh, yeah, then it was great because the morphine helped and then everything slowed down, which was good for me because I wasn't in so much pain bad for giving birth. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically I got up to, uh, there are differing opinions, I think, between like the, the different uh, midwives and doctors who are examining me, whether I got to, like seven or eight centimeters eventually, but some I got to around there um, and it just stopped, it just stopped progressing. There wasn't really a reason, no one really knew the reason, could have been baby's head was in slightly wrong position, who knows. Um, but it's it, it slowed down. I was still in pain. I was still getting contractions, but it was so much more manageable. I just remember one of the midwives um, just being like, she's like, I think you're in too good a mood to be progressing. She's like, I think if you were really, like at eight centimeters, I would expect you to be a lot more unhappy right now. And you're not really. So we had two issues to deal with. One, the fact that uh, my labor had slowed down. And two, the fact, if you remember, my waters had broken the day before and we'd got to that 24 hour barrier by that point. So they were saying there's a couple of things we can do. We can either just go and have a C-section right now, or they could give me antibiotics to try and sort of combat, combat any infection that might occur. So I said, yeah, well, give me antibiotics, it's fine. We'll try and keep going. Um, but then obviously the labor um, stopped progressing. So the option we had was to hook me up to a drip to did administer like the induction drug, I suppose, to see if they could get things going again. Now, I knew that this drip was gonna be hella painful. Like I just was like, I, I knew that was an option um, if they needed to speed up labor. And I was like, there's no way I'm doing that without an epidural. Cause I was like, I don't want to try it, see how painful it is. And then ha say, now I need an epidural while I'm going through contractions. Like that's just gonna be too much. So we moved down out of the lovely midwife run uh, delivery suite into like the labor ward and got my epidural um, and that was fine actually like it was a bit it was it's not supposed to be painful when they insert it um and it was it was a little bit i think but it didn't really feel like i think i imagined it to be really painful because they're injecting you in your spine but really they did a lot of um local anesthetic first and then as she was doing it there's one point where i was like oh it just felt like pressure like someone really pushing you and i was like all oh, that hurts and as, as soon as i said it hurt they could like put more local anesthetic in so really it was fine um and it was lovely. It was so lovely. I like, I can't tell you, I was just like on the bed, like, oh, oh my gosh, it's all, it stopped. <laughs> like it's, it's all stopped. I could feel like tensing a bit like we well, yeah, have period pain or, or cramp. I could feel the tensing in my muscles, but it like didn't hurt. Apparently the contractions were happening. I'd, I've heard a few people that this happens to, and it seems really strange that you have a drug that that's supposed to do contractions, and then the kind of measurement of pressure that they have to measure your contractions is going wee. So I couldn't feel it, obviously, because I was on um, 
on an epidural, but it was saying I was contracting, right? Nothing happened. Like, n my, my cervix did not dilate anymore. It was done at, like, the eight centimeters that we got to. So, I don't know, but that's happened to other people I know. Other people have been on that induction drip, and it's been saying they've been having contractions, and they, like, either can't feel it, or nothing happens. So, they were gonna leave me four hours to see if I could get to 10 from eight. Um, and then one of the midwives came in and she was like, look, I've spoken to the consultant and she doesn't think we should leave you for four hours. She's like, I think we should just check you after two because she said it's been going on for far too long now. And I was like, yes, thank you. Um, I remember calling my mum while I was in the bed and I was just like, do you know what? Even if I get to 10 centimetres now, I would then have to push. And I was so tired. I was so tired. I was like, I can't imagine it. And I just thought, I think section is where we need, we need to go. I just had no energy left. And I think all the doctors and everyone were very of that opinion. Um, so yeah, then once she checked me again after two hours, nothing had happened. So she was like, yep, yeah, section, that's what we need. Um, spoke to the anaesthetist, he was so lovely. Um, we got everything sorted. In, in Within an hour and a half, I think I was on the table. Like it was so quick. Um, they call it an emergency C-section, obviously because it's not planned, but it wasn't an emergency. Like it wasn't like, you know, blue lights, like something was gonna happen. Um, it's just called that because <laughs> we hadn't had a planned section. So it was unplanned C-section really. Um, but it was good because I was already hooked up to the epidural. They just had to do um, slightly higher drugs through it. Obviously they didn't have to insert one. Um, we got us all in. It was very surreal. I've never had any surgery before in my life. It's, it was very like, oh gosh, I, I want to say scary. It was scary, but it was just like so intense. And I was really trying to breathe through it. Um, and obviously for a lot of it, I was being prepared and Will wasn't, wasn't in there um so he had to go and get all put in scrubs and stuff outside and he was only allowed in once I was kind of all set up on the table um I remember one of the midwives being in there with me holding my hand because I was just like Whew. and the weirdest thing it just it's like you forget that you're having a baby at the end of it I mean I, it's not that I forgot that but it's just you're so focused on everything that's happening um and it was so strange to be told like, oh, okay, well, within an hour, it's gonna be over, basically. And I remember Will coming in and being really smiley, obviously trying to like calm me down um, and sitting at my head. And he was like, it's all right, we're gonna have a baby soon. Oh, we're gonna have a baby. They're going, we're gonna meet them. Like, it's gonna be amazing. Um, and that was really calm, calming me down. Um, the actual C-section I felt like was quite stressful. The blue curtain, I imagined it being kind of like here, um, but it's literally like, here, like it was like above my face. I was just like lying there and I had blue everywhere. And I couldn't see anything. I could barely like see Will who was like next to me here. Um, Cause I guess they, you know, <laughs> they need a lot of space to do the, do the operation. Um, this is where I feel like I have unresolved issues with the birth because there are just questions that I never really got the answers to. So we'd said that we wanted a few things like um, delayed cord clamping, which means like when they give birth to the baby, um, they don't cut the cord straight away, they wait for the cord to kind of stop pulsating so that more blood goes into the baby before you cut the cord. Um, I can't remember what else we'd asked for, but basically, the baby was born. <laughs> we heard her crying and they didn't show her to us. They didn't lift the, the, lift the curtain down. They just took her away straight away. And the only that's the only time I knew that she was born is like I heard crying and they, she was straight with the doc, the baby doctors. Obviously we couldn't see anything. And the anaesthetist was going, oh yes, yeah, uh, like that's it. That's a nice sound, isn't it? Hearing the crying. Obviously I was crying as well. And then I was like, so have they cut the cord already then? And he was like, oh yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And I just felt, it's, it's weird. I just got the feeling like he kept giving me drugs to try and get my womb to contract. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna do this because your womb's not contracting as quickly as I thought and blah, 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 blah. And I just got the feeling that something was going wrong and they weren't telling me. Um, and that may have been what happened because afterwards everything was fine, Edith was fine, <laughs> like I was, I was fine, but it just, I just got the feeling that maybe something had happened or they were surprised about something. He'd, he'd made a comment after the surgery which said like, oh yeah, she's a big baby, that's why they were surprised, blah, 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 blah. And you know, you're just sort of so out of it. I was just trying to piece it together, but I was like, but why was, why did everything happen so quickly? Why, why didn't they show us the baby? Like, was there a concern that there was something wrong? And then obviously it got resolved or, I don't know, but I feel like I sort of didn't have that moment of them of them showing her to us, which I, I expected. And at one point, like they had said, oh, it's a girl. And then at one point the, the anaesthetist was like, oh yeah, he's he's quite a big baby. And I remember looking at Will being like, what? So is it a boy or a girl? Like, I was really like, what? 
like they didn't do a whole it's a girl like here she is and it was really clear i was just like they call it like what have i just given birth to so that was how she got here um quite dramatically we were all okay the bad thing for me as well when i ha remember is that i was really shaking after the operation which is something the anesthetist had told me would happen but i definitely had an infection from whatever it could have been from where the waters had broken earlier or I, I, who knows what it was um but i had a temperature and they found infection markers in my in my blood afterwards but i was shaking and i think that's like a normal reaction but also i felt really cold it was like i had a fever and i, I was like my jaw was clamping and i was like i need something to bite on because it was hurting so much and i eventually i couldn't hold her so i had to give her to will and i feel quite sad that i didn't feel like i could sort of hold her like i didn't feel i felt like so exhausted and quite rushed we went to like the operation recovery bit and i was like all out of it like all saying i was cold and the midwife was like try and get some sleep but i just had a baby like how was i going to sleep i remember sleeping off the fever and i woke up and i was like oh where are they like where's where's uh will and edith and the woman was like oh no they were um the next door remember they went out to do um whatever because um she had to have a cannula in her hand because I had an infection and they had to give her antibiotics as well. So they went off to do that. And I was like, yeah, no, but that was that was last night. Like, where are they now this morning? Where do they go this morning? And the midwife was like, are you all right, Lauren? And I was like, well, clearly not. Um, but I thought it was the next day. I literally thought I had been asleep and it was the next morning and it had been like 20 minutes and I was just completely um out of it and i didn't know where they were and she was like oh they were in that room you were in before remember and i was like no because i don't know the layout of the hospital i don't know where i am now i've just been wheeled around when i was in recovery i had um a pulse monitor which it, i don't know why it wasn't on my foot but it was on my finger for some reason i had a blood pressure um, cuff around my arm and my cannula was in my right hand because they'd screwed up putting it in my left hand and they had to put it in there so I was hooked up to a drip on this side and I was supposed to try and breastfeed a baby like I was literally just like oh, um, like Edward Scissorhands or something and everything was painful anytime I moved I'd like pull my cannula out or you know I still had that bump which obviously <laughs> you know, had, had surgery on it and holding the baby on top and trying to get her on the boob. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it was a lot. Recovery is a lot. And we had to be in the hospital for uh, two nights afterwards because of the infection. Um, so weirdly, the labour, although it's very difficult and very hard, was not as hard, was not as traumatising, I would say, as the bit afterwards. The bit afterwards was like, you're, I had no sleep and then I had this brand new baby and as I said, I'm all like hooked up to things and there's so much recovery going on after a C-section. Um, but the minute we got home, it was so much, so much better, like having a shower <laughs> and just having quiet and being in your own house. It was brilliant. So I'm not really sure how to end this video other than saying if you're about to go through it yourself or you plan on going through it at some point in the future, um, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. You will be fine. Um, and, you know, it will be very hard. <laughs> but it will be fine. And you'll get through it. And I think, you know, it's a very, very extreme thing. Um, and, it, you know, I don't want to minimise it. And I, d I did feel like it was a huge shock and a lot to go through. Will and I felt like we had to keep talking about it a lot to try and process what had happened to us um, in a way. But I'm, you know, several months down the line now and really fully healed. And from the um, C-section as well, I think I started to feel really quite human after about four weeks. The first two weeks were rough. Um, it was very hard. After four weeks, I really felt like, oh, I'm OK now. And six weeks like I hadn't had an operation basically like I feel like it did heal very very quickly um considering that it's that it's major surgery um and once my bump went down properly you know the first six weeks are such a blur of, of parenthood anyway especially if you want to breastfeed like it was just all over the place so you could just write off those six weeks and then then it's all right then you sort of feel like yourself again um so yeah I hopefully <laughs> that is enough information for it to be useful, but also enough to be reassuring if you are about to go through it. And I'll see you in my next video.